home. As soon as we had walked at least half a block from the school, Mom said, So, how'd it go? Did you like it? Not yet, Mom, when we get home, I said. The moment we got inside the house, I ran to my room and threw myself onto my bed. I could tell Mom didn't know what was up, and I guess I really didn't either. I felt very sad and a tiny bit happy at the exact same time, kind of like that laughing, crying feeling all over again. My dog Daisy followed me into the room, jumped on the bed, and started licking me all over my face. Who's a good girly? I said in my dad voice. Who's a good girly? Is everything okay, sweetness? Mom said. She wanted to sit down beside me, but Daisy was hogging the bed. Excuse me, Daisy. She sat down, nudging Daisy over. Were those kids not nice to you, Augie? Oh, no, I said, only half lying. They were okay. But were they nice? Mr. Tishman went out of his way to tell me what sweet kids they are. Uh-huh, I nodded, but I kept looking at Daisy, kissing her on the nose and rubbing her ear until the, her back leg did that little flea scratch shake. That boy Julian seemed especially nice, Mom said. Oh no, he was the least nice. I like Jack, though. He was nice. I thought his name was Jack Will, but it's just Jack. Wait, maybe I'm getting them confused. Which one was the one with the dark hair that was brushed forward? Julian. And he wasn't nice? No, not nice. Oh, she thought about this for a second. Okay, so is he the kind of kid who's one way in front of grown-ups and another way in front of kids? Yeah, I guess. Ah, hate those, she answered, nodding. He was like, so, August, what's the deal with your face? I said, looking at Daisy the whole time. Were you in a fire or something? Mom didn't say anything. When I looked up at her, I could tell she was completely shocked. He didn't say it in a mean way, I said quickly. He was just asking. Mom nodded. But I really like Jack, I said. He was like, shut up, Julian. And Charlotte was like, you're so rude, Julian. Mom nodded again. She pressed her fingers on her forehead like she was pushing against a headache. I'm so sorry, Augie, she said quietly. Her cheeks were bright red. No, it's okay, Mom, really. You don't have to go to school if you don't want, sweetie. I want to, I said. Augie, really, Mom, I want to. And I wasn't lying. Pause here to complete your questions. First day jitters. Okay, so I admit that the first day of school I was so nervous that the butterflies in my stomach were more like pigeons flying around my insides. Mom and Dad were probably a little nervous too, but they acted all excited for me, taking pictures of me and Via before we left the house since it was Via's first day of school too. Up until a few days before, we still weren't sure I would be going to school at all. After my tour of the school, Mom and Dad had reversed sides on whether I should go or not. Mom was now the one saying I shouldn't go, and Dad was saying I should. Dad had told me he was really proud of how I handled myself with Julian, and that I was turning into quite the strong man. And I heard him tell Mom that he now thought she had been right all along. But Mom, I could tell, wasn't so sure anymore. When Dad told her that he and Via wanted to walk me to school today too, since it was the way on the way to the stubby station, Mom seemed relieved that we would all be going together. And I guess I was too. Even though Beecher Prep is just a few blocks from our house, I've only been on that block a couple of times before. In general, I try to avoid blocks where there are lots of kids roaming around. On our block, everybody knows me and I know everybody. I know every brick and every tree trunk and every crack in the sidewalk. I know Mrs. Grimaldi, the lady who's always sitting by her window, and the old guy who walks up and down the street whistling like a bird. I know the deli on the counter when, where mom gets our bagels and the waitress at the coffee shop who all call me honey and give me lollipops whenever they see me. I love my neighborhood of North River Heights, which is why it was so strange to be walking down these blocks feeling like it was all new to me, suddenly. Amesford Avenue, a street I've been down a million times, looked totally different for some reason, full of people I never saw before, waiting for buses, excuse me, pushing strollers. We crossed Amesfort and turned up Heights Place. Via walked next to me like she usually does, and Mom and Dad were behind us. As soon as we turned the corner and we saw all the kids in front of the school, hundreds of them talking to each other in little groups, laughing or standing with their parents, who were talking with other parents. I kept my head way down. Everybody's just as nervous as you are, said Via in my ear. Just remember that this is everyone's first day of school, okay? 
Mr. Tushman was greeting students and parents in front of the school entrance. I have to admit, so far nothing bad had happened. I didn't catch anyone staring or even noticing me. Only once did I look up to see some girls looking my way and whispering with their hands cupped over their mouths, but they looked away when they saw me notice them. We'd reached the front entrance. Okay, this is it, big boy, said Dad, putting his hands on top of my shoulders. Have a great first day. I love you, said Via, giving me a big kiss and a hug. You too, I said. I love you, Augie, said Dad, hugging me. Bye! Then Mom hugged me, but I could tell she was about to cry, which would have totally embarrassed me. So I just gave her a fast, hard hug, turned, and disappeared into the school. Pause here to answer any questions. Locks. I went straight to room 301 on the third floor. Now I was glad I'd gone on that little tour because I know exactly where to go and didn't have to look up once. I noticed that some kids were definitely staring at me now. I did my thing and pretending not to notice. I went inside the classroom and the teacher was writing on the chalkboard while all the kids started sitting at different desks. The desks were in a half circle facing the chalkboard, so I chose the desk in the middle toward the back, which I thought would make it harder for anyone to stare at me. I still kept my head way down, just looking up enough from under the bangs to see everyone's feet. As the desk started to fill up, I did notice that no one sat down next to me. A couple of times, somebody was about to sit next to me, then changed his or her mind at the last minute and sat somewhere else. Hey, August! It was Charlotte, giving me her little wave as she sat down at a desk in front of the class. Why anyone would ever choose to sit way up front in a class, I don't know. Hey! I said, nodding hello. Then I noticed Julian was sitting a few seats away from her, talking to some other kids. I know he saw me, but he didn't say hello. Suddenly, someone was set sitting down next to me. It was Jack Will. Jack. What's up? He said, nodding at me. Hey, Jack, I answered, waving my hand, which I immediately wished I hadn't done because it felt kind of uncool. Okay, kids. Okay, everybody. Settle down, said the teacher, now facing us. She had written her name, Miss Potosa, on the chalkboard. Everybody find a seat. Please come in, she said comfortably said to a couple of kids who had just walked in the room, there's a seat right there and right there. She hadn't noticed me yet. Now, the first thing I want everybody to do is to stop talking and, she noticed me, put your backpacks down and quiet down. She had only hesitated for a millionth of a second, but I could tell the moment she saw me. Like I said, I'm used to it by now. I'm going to take attendance and do the seating chart, she continued, sitting on the edge of her desk. Next to her were three neat rows of accordion folders. When I call your name, come up and I'll hand you a folder with your name on it. It contains your class schedule and your combination lock, which you should not try to open until I tell you to. Your locker number is written on the class schedule. Be forewarned that some lockers are not right outside this class, but down the hall. And before anyone even thinks of asking, no, you cannot switch lockers and you can't switch locks. Then if there's time at the end of this period, we're all going to go get our get to know each other a little better, okay? Okay. She picked up the clipboard on her desk and started reading the names out loud. Okay, so Julian Albans, she said, looking up. Julian raised his hand and said, here, at the same time. Hi, Julian, she said, making a note on her seating chart. She picked up the very first folder and held it out toward him. Come pick it up, she said, kind of no-nonsense. He got up and took it from her. He met a chin. She handed a folder to each kid as she read off the names. She went down the list. I noticed that the seat next to me was the only one still empty, even though there were two kids sitting at one desk just a few seats away. When she called the name of one of them, a big kid named Henry Joplin, who already looked like a teenager, she said, Henry, there's an empty desk right over there. Why don't you take that seat, okay? She handed him his folder and pointed to the desk next to mine. Although I didn't look at him directly, I could tell Henry didn't want to move next to me, just by the way he dragged his backpack on the floor as he came over, like he was moving in slow motion. Then he plopped his backpack up really high on the right side of the desk, so it was kind of like a wall between his desk and mine. Maya Markowitz, Miss Potosa was saying. Here, said a girl about four desks away from me. Miles Nori. Here, said the kid that had been sitting with Henry Joplin. As he walked back to his desk, I saw him shoot Henry a poor you look. 
August Pullman, said Miss Potosa. Here, I say quietly, raising my hand a bit. Hi, August, she said, smiling at me very nicely when I went up to get my folder. I kind of felt everyone's eyes burning into my back from a few seconds. I stood in front of the class, and everybody looked down when I walked back to my desk. I resisted spinning the combination when I sat down, even though everyone else was doing it, because she had specifically told us not to. I was already pretty good at opening locks anyway, because I've used them on my bike. Henry kept trying to open his lock, but couldn't do it. He was getting frustrated and kind of cursing under his breath. Miss Potosa called out the next few names. The last name was Jack Will. After she handed Jack his folder, she said, Okay, so everybody write your combinations down somewhere it's safe. Somewhere safe that you won't forget, okay? But if you do forget, which happens at least 3.2 times per semester, Mrs. Garcia has a list of all the combination numbers. Now go ahead, take your locks out of your folders, and spend a couple of minutes practicing how to open them. Though I know some of you went ahead and did that anyway. She was looking at Henry when she said that. And in the meanwhile, I'll tell you guys a little something about myself. And then you guys can tell me a little bit about yourselves. And well, um, get to know each other. Sound good? Good. She smiled at everyone, though I felt like she was smiling at me the most. It wasn't a shiny smile like Mrs. Garcia's smile, but a normal smile like she meant it. She looked very different from what I thought teachers were going to look like. I guess I thought she'd look like Miss Fowl from Jimmy Neutron, an old lady with a big bun on top of her head. But in fact, she looked exactly like Mon Mothma from Star Wars Episode Four, Six. Haircut kind of like a boy's, and a big white shirt kind of like a tunic. She turned around and started writing on the chalkboard. Henry still couldn't get his lock to open, and he was getting more and more frustrated every time someone else popped one open. He got really annoyed when I was able to open mine on the first try. The funny thing is, if he hadn't put the backpack between us, I most definitely would have offered to help him. Pause here and answer your questions. Around the room. Miss Potosa told us a little about who she was. It was boring stuff about where she originally came from and how she always wanted to teach, and she left her job on Wall Street about six years ago to pursue her dream and teach kids. She ended, up by, she ended by asking if anyone had any questions, and Julian raised his hand. Yes, she had to look at the list to remember his name, Julian. That's cool about how you're pursuing your dream, he said. Thank you. You're welcome, he smiled proudly. Okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Julian? Actually, here's where I want everyone to do. Think of two things you want other people to know about you. Actually, wait a minute. How many of you can how many of you came up how many of you came from the beach or lower school? About half the kids raised their hands. Okay, so a few of you already know each other, but the rest of you, I guess, are new to the school, right? Okay, so everyone think of two things you want other people to know about you. And if you know some of the other kids, try to think of things they don't already know about you. Okay? Okay, so let's get started with Julian and we'll go around the room. Julian scrunched up his face and started tapping his forehead like he was thinking really hard. Okay, whenever you're ready, Miss Potosa said. Okay, so number one is that... Do me a favor and start with your names, okay? Miss Potosa interrupted. It'll help me remember everyone. Oh, okay, so my name is Julian. And the number one thing I'd like to tell everyone about myself is that I just got Battleground Mystic for my Wi-Fi and it's to and for my Wii, and it's totally awesome. And the number two thing is that we got a ping pong table this summer. Very nice. I love ping pong, said Miss Potosa. Does everyone ha does anyone have any questions for Julian? Is Battleground Mystic multiplayer or one player? said the kid named Miles. Not those kinds of questions, guys, said Miss Potosa. Okay, so how about you? She pointed to Charlotte, probably because her desk was closest to the front. Oh, sure. Charlotte didn't hesitate for even a second, like she knew exactly what she wanted to say. My name is Charlotte. I have two sisters, and we just got a new puppy named Suki in July. We got her from an animal shelter, and she's so, so cute. That's great, Charlotte. Thank you, said Miss Potosa. Okay, then. Who's next? Pause here to answer any questions.